All right, so let, let's go through here. Uh, and I'm going to run through this. And I know, you ha I know you've got your questions, so continue to ask those. But I'm going to go through here uh, and just kind of give a brief synopsis of where we've been this morning, where I expect us to go for the rest of the afternoon. And once we kind of come back after that, then I'll try to answer your question. So just bear with me for a few minutes. We'll go through this, and then I'll come back, uh, and I'll try to answer these questions. So if I don't answer this right away, uh, that, that's the reason why. Hey there, Matthew. What's up, buddy? Hope you're doing well. All right, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let me switch over here so you can see so you can see the graphics. There you go. Uh, downtown Greensboro. Yeah, it's kind of a winter scene. Kind of a winter scene. This looked really, really beautiful early this morning uh, when it was snowing nice and heavy. It looked real beautiful in our weather garden as well. Notice where our temperatures are, though. 20 degrees in Greensboro. It is cold. It is cold. And then, of course, you factor in not only the cold temperatures that we have, but then you factor in the wind into that. Uh, and those feels like temperatures outside are in the teens. You know, even single digits at times. At one point this morning, our feels like temperature, well, as you see it now in Greensboro, the feels like temperature outside is six. Feels like six degrees outside. Uh, eight degrees in Winston-Salem, the feels like temperature there. So that wind, of course, really is making a difference. And also the temperatures with them so cold, this stuff is sticking fast. And, and you probably noticed that as soon as it started this morning and as soon as it started to come down, it was sticking fast, right? Very different than a couple weeks ago when the ground was still warm and we hadn't really had a lot of cold weather. Yeah, now we've had a couple weeks of really cold weather, several nights in the 20s. Um, so the ground is cold, the air is cold. So this is really, really easily sticking. Um, and it did not take long. It didn't take long at all for those roads uh, to really start to become slick and become bad. And that's how it, kind of the way they look uh, and will look for the rest of the day. So uh, here's a live look at the radar right now. Of course, you notice all the blue and a little bit of purple. All of that is indicating snow, but I don't think this radar is very is coloring this the right way. Notice all the pink down to the south. You see a few little pink splotches showing up. Sometimes the radar has, has trouble coloring these things. So if we switch over to another view, this is what we call our debris detection or which is officially called our correlation coefficient. Um, it's another product that we use in radar. And a lot of times you see us use this during severe storms or during tornadoes because it can pick out where there may be debris being lofted into the air. In the same way, we can also use this in a winter weather situation and we can kind of see where the differences are between snow and sleet and maybe freezing rain. Because what this product is doing is differentiating between the precipitation types or the targets that the radar is measuring. So notice where this orange and this yellow is popping up on this radar image. That's your sleet line, okay? So this is, uh, uh oh. That's a straight arrow. That's not what I want to do. Here we go. So this is your sleet line right here, right? So you notice this is all snow up here, and this is all sleet down here below that line. So that line, that orange and that yellow, really indicates where we're starting to see that mixing and starting to see that sleet show up. So everything northwest of that line, so everything up here is snow still. Uh, everything south of this line and southeast of this line is all sleet. And not to say there couldn't be some sleet mixing in up to our north and west. The strongest signals, though, are just over the triad right now. So we are seeing that change over to sleet for most of us. But we still have a ways to go. We still got a ways to go. Notice how big this system is, right? Monster. Uh, in fact, snow producer, sleet producer, freezing rain producer for us, severe storm producer down in Florida. There were tornado warnings in North Florida this morning. And this could even end up as being um, a severe storm day down at the coast of North Carolina today as well. There are going to be some flooding issues down there too. Uh, but we, of course, are left with the wintry precipitation, the sleet, and the freezing rain. So we still have a ways, we still have a ways to go. Uh, all right, so let's go through in time here on a closer view and show you what happens as we go throughout the day. Again, we already have seen that change over to sleet. That's gonna continue. But notice as we go into the afternoon, pretty much all of us get taken over by sleet. And I want you to notice the temperatures, right? We're at 20 degrees right now in Greensboro. Notice how the temperatures try to come up close to freezing. I expect us to stay in the 20s, but the closer we get to freezing here at the surface, it's also an indication that things are warming above the above the ground as well. Um, so if you look at an upper air sounding, it's kind of it's it's a tool that we use to assess what the atmosphere is like, all the way from the ground, all the way up to the top of the atmosphere and the troposphere, and so on and so forth. And not far above the ground, we have what we call a warm nose or a layer of warm air that's about around 5,000 feet. And every time you get one of those, it's falling as snow 
way, way, way up, but then it falls through that warm layer and melts. And once a snowflake melts, it can never become a snowflake again. So it melts, and if there's enough cold air between that warm layer and the surface, it can refreeze. And so that's what we're seeing happening now. It refreezes into sleet. If it doesn't have the opportunity to refreeze, Notice if our temperatures come up close to freezing, or right at freezing at 32, then we'll have freezing rain um, because it will melt and then it won't have time to refreeze before it hits the surface. But if the surface is cold, for 32 on the ground, it's going to instantly freeze on impact. And so that's where we start to see things coated. So the longer we can keep the sleet and stay away from the freezing rain, the better off we are as far as power outages trees coming down, that sort of thing. Um, and I'm encouraged by what I see, I'm pretty encouraged by what I see right now. So there's there's a good a good bet that we could remain sleep for quite a while and we wouldn't have as long of a period of freezing rain. That would be nice. That would be very, very nice. Um, that would be very kind to us. Notice as we go into the evening hours, six o'clock, seven o'clock, this should start to wind down a bit and start to taper off. By seven, eight o'clock, I really think we're mostly done with this. Really think we're mostly done with this. This could end as a few snow showers late tonight, but I wouldn't hedge my bets on that. Um, I think we're going to get dry slotted towards the end. And what I mean by that is notice how the system is shaped and how it's formed, right? So you have, well, if I can get my pencil here to draw. So you have a cold front here. I can't draw. If you have a cold front here, of course, you have a warm. Why can't I draw on this? Sorry. Cold front. Warm front. Here's your area of low pressure. And all of this cold air is getting wrapped around this area of low pressure. So all this is snow. But in here, when you get all that wrap around, this is a dry slot. And I think that's going to eat up a lot of our moisture on the back side of this system. So I don't see it pulling away and giving, giving us a big burst of snow on the back side of this. I just don't see that happening. I, I think it'll likely taper off as we go into this evening. Now, the other big thing, other big factor we need to talk about today is wind. Um, nothing too crazy yet this morning. We've had some 25 to 30 mile per hour gusts generally. And just in the last hour or so, uh, PTI has had a 31 mile per hour gust out of the airport, 30 mile per hour gust over in Winston-Salem, 21 in Asheboro, 22 Lexington, 25, miles per hour, uh, 25 mile per hour gust over in Siler City. So this is nothing too crazy, right? This is just a regular old windy day for us. But watch what happens as we go into the afternoon. I think we could see some wind gusts upwards of 40 miles per hour. Maybe in a couple circumstances could we get above 40 miles per hour. And that's significant, especially if we get icing, um, because this high wind will make it a lot easier for trees to come down, and you add a coating of ice on top of that, and it'll be even easier for those trees to fall over and bring down power lines. So as we go into the afternoon and early evening, again, I'm paying really close attention to not only our freezing rain potential, but also how high our winds get. Uh, those two things combined could really cause for uh, numerous power outages across the area. Uh, and again, I'm just going to reiterate the fact, obviously you know this now because it's not snowing anymore, it's sleeting. Snow is not the big piece of our system this time around. All right, snow is actually the least part of it. Uh, I know, it's bad news for snow lovers like myself. But really the icing potential, the travel issues, and the power are our big, are our big things uh, over the next 24 to 48 hours. So as, as we get sleep, possibly some freezing rain this evening, that coating of ice will not only make the already slick roads slicker, it makes it much easier for trees to fall uh, and have some power lines and, and power outages across the area. I think that chance is better down to our south and east uh, where they've had sleet longer, uh, even a period of freezing rain for some folks already this morning down to our south and east. Um, so a bigger problem down there, not as much a problem for us. As far as snow totals go, there have been some questions about this, but it seems to me, seems to me like this has played out pretty well this morning. Uh, it seems like folks in the Ashboro area, south of Greensboro, have reported around an inch, down to about a half of an inch. That seems to be the most common report that I've seen so far. And generally in the triad area, around one to two inches. So that seems to be playing out pretty good. Again, further north and west you go, less they have to worry about sleet, less they have to worry about freezing rain. It's been snow there all morning. It'll likely stay uh, snow for most of the day. Um, but I, I actually think it's hard for all of us completely to steer clear of the sleet. Of course, further north and west you go, the better chance of that you'll have. So again, talking about ice, um, haven't really put specific totals on this ice map for a reason. Um, you notice we, we're staying sleet right now. 
and we'll see how this goes and for the rest of the afternoon. But I think your your risk to have that quarter to about a half of an inch or more of ice or to really have significant icing and significant power issues really remains from the triad, basically the I-40 corridor south and east. So uh, Randolph County, Davidson County, some folks that live over in Chatham County, Montgomery County, Moore County, Stanley County, you get the picture. I think all of those folks are gonna have a much better, a much higher risk uh, of seeing some significant icing and significant power issues. And of course, some of those could linger for a couple of days if, if enough folks are left in the dark after today. Uh, so kind of in a nutshell here, again, we're past the snow point now. I think pretty much everybody has switched over to sleet and possibly freezing rain as we head into the afternoon. Again, watching those wind gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour, maybe more than that in some cases. Uh, and we'll see how much of a coating of ice that some folks are able to pick up. That, that really is the killer. That, that, that really is the killer. Once you get sleet and ice in here, it ruins everything, doesn't it? Ruins everything. Um, so that's what we're going to be watching as we go into the afternoon and into the evening. All right, so what happens after this, right? We've talked a lot about what happens today. So what happens after this? Um, so this is actually a, a quick moving system. It's a big system, which is why it takes all day to get through here, but it's actually a pretty quick mover. So, you know, by tonight, eight, nine o'clock, this thing's already pulling away from us. The center of the low pressure should already be up into Virginia before you go to bed tonight. And it continues to pull away from us. Although we do stay windy on the back side of this. So even though tomorrow our system will be well away from us, we're still getting uh, strong winds and some high wind gusts around 30 miles per hour, at least for the first part of the day. So it should, wind should relax a bit as we go into the afternoon tomorrow. Uh, but high pressure builds in. The sun is back tomorrow, and I actually think our clouds clear out of here pretty fast. The mountains are still going to get some more snow showers tomorrow uh, on, on what we call a northwest flow snow event. Uh, what happens, of course, is you have all this cold air rushing in out of the north, uh, out of the northwest, and it hits the mountains and is able to tap into some of that leftover moisture from our system that pulls away. So the wind comes in like this, and it rises when it hits the mountains, and you get snow showers because it's cold. Um, pretty common setup for our mountains this time of the year. So that'll happen. They'll, they'll continue to see snow today and likely for the first part of tomorrow, uh, maybe even into tomorrow afternoon. And then high pressure builds in, saves the day for us. Does bring us back to sunshine, but we never really get warm this week. You'll see that in the seven day here. We never really get warm. Notice our morning lows are in the 20s. Afternoon highs are in the 40s, even with sun. It's going to be hard to melt a lot of that away unless it's in direct sunlight. So uh, by tomorrow afternoon, I expect the major roads, the highways to all be just fine. But your neighborhood, my neighborhood, the side roads and side streets, they'll likely have issues for a while. You know, into Tuesday, there could still even be some slick spots um, on, on some of those side roads and in some of those neighborhoods by, by Wednesday morning, too. But we will have sun, and that'll help to dry things up a bit. Now, I know you're looking at the seven-day wondering, what is that I see later in the week? There will be another opportunity. Um, it looks like we could have another system ahead our way. That could bring us another opportunity to have some snow showers, maybe on Friday, uh, maybe heading into the weekend. That's still kind of a wild card. Let's take these one at a time. <laughs> Let's get through this one first, and then we can talk about the one uh, later on down the road. Still far out on that one. Um, something we'll keep an eye on. Something we will keep an eye on.